and welcome to Fig and Me. Back in 2014, I wrote a guide on how to start your doll making adventures. Back then, I was already making natural fiber art dolls, but the dolls were somewhat simpler than they are now. No articulation had been achieved and the needle felting was kept simple. Now, I want to provide you with a good resource on learning how to make natural fiber art dolls. Though the initial blog post still applies, the world has evolved a lot and with it, the techniques we doll makers are using now. So if you have made a few Waldorf inspired dolls but would like to dive deeper into the world of natural fiber art dolls, this might be of help to you. But first, let's attempt some sort of definition. What is a natural fiber art doll? And what is a Waldorf inspired doll? Is there a difference between the two? Yes, to my somewhat trained eye, I would say there's a big difference. To you, since you are new to these dolls, you might not see it or know the difference between these styles. Waldorf inspired dolls are meant and created for children, but they are slightly more elaborate than the extremely simple Waldorf dolls. They are inspired by Waldorf dolls in the sense that all natural materials have been used in their creation. No glue, no plastic joints or plastic pellets, no man-made fibers for their hair or clothing, etc. have been used. The doll corresponds to the proportions of a human child, whether that's a baby, a toddler or a child of school age. They are meant as aids for healthy childhood development. Waldorf inspired dolls are geared towards children, so their clothing is therefore kept quite simple. This is not just so children can dress them by themselves, but to help them with motor control. Normally, you will be using natural materials that are meant to withstand children's play, like wool yarns for hair or even coarse mohair weft, which is very sturdy. I wouldn't recommend using alpaca fibers, for example, on a Waldorf inspired doll, as these fibers are too fragile, in my opinion, to be handled constantly via children's play. The main difference between a Waldorf doll and a Waldorf inspired doll nowadays is that you will find the doll maker needle felted the facial features or even the body of the doll. These features can still be kept very simple, but traditionally Waldorf dolls are only sculpted using a regular doll making needle and thread and they are much softer to the touch than a Waldorf inspired doll and certainly much softer than a natural fiber art doll. Waldorf inspired dolls support the addition of more shape to the face using needle felting techniques. What is then a natural fiber art doll? A natural fiber art doll is geared towards collectors. They can be made for children, of course, but they are not normally geared for them. They're usually mementos or special dolls given to young ones on special occasions. My dolls, for example, are meant for play, which means all of their clothing is removable and washable. They can be dressed, hair can be styled, they can be spot cleaned, but my dolls are normally played with by adults. A natural fiber art doll geared towards collectors has more elaborate clothing. It can also be a wool sculpture over an armature for those collectors that love to pose and photograph their dolls. Natural fiber art dolls have a lot of expression and realism on their faces, and usually their bodies are made to match these more realistic faces. The body, for example, is no longer a simple torso, but it has a lot of contour, and so have the legs and arms. Their clothing is highly functional and removable, but it usually requires adult hands and care to be maneuvered. Natural fiber art dolls have amazing doll hair. Anything from Suri Alpaca, Lester, Wensleydale, Teeswater, Mohair, Yak, Camel, 
Cotswold, Blueface Lester, etc. They have very expressive or extremely realistic eyes. They usually have some sort of body mobility, whether that is through fabric joints, plastic joints, inner armatures, or articulated body parts. They are extremely time consuming to create and are not very beginner friendly. It takes many, many dolls and a couple of years to get enough skill and experience in needle felting and sewing and pattern design to be able to create a unique and beautiful natural fiber art doll. Extreme attention to detail is required and unbelievable amounts of patience. Just for an idea for my larger dolls, it takes me 10 to 12 hours to needle felt and cover a full head. That is just the head. That's not embroidering the eyes, making the hair, adding ears, or making the entire doll. I still have to make all the clothing, which is one of my favorite parts. I am not trying to dissuade you because this style of doll making is absolutely gratifying, but it is an arduous journey and you best be prepared to play the long game. It is highly addicting and you need to exercise clear boundaries between your personal life and your doll making life. This is not always possible when your heart is raising a mile a minute because you just discovered a new face under all the wool. Why needle felting? Why wool? Since the vast majority of doll makers creating these natural fiber art dolls started their journey first with Waldorf dolls and then Waldorf inspired dolls, we have kept within the same materials and evolved mainly through the techniques we use. Wool is an amazing sustainable and renewable natural product. It has many properties that man-made fiber fill doesn't have. The main feature for me is that it will biodegrade given the right circumstances. If you want to check out a video on how I wash normal Waldorf dolls, you can check out the card up above or the link in the video description. Some people are afraid of wool because they don't know how to wash the dolls. Of course, natural fiber art dolls are not meant to be submerged in this way and clean like a regular Waldorf doll. This is due to the thick needle felted layers, the fibers used for their hair, and any joints or added weight they may have. Now that you understand the difference between Waldorf dolls, Waldorf inspired dolls, and natural fiber art dolls, let me tell you how you go about making the last of these three styles. First, you're gonna have to focus on the design of your doll. Natural fiber art dolls normally represent children, but of course you can choose to make a teenager, a baby, an adult, or a person of the old age. Natural fiber art doll is a term used to convey the techniques and materials as well as the gear customer. So your first task is to decide on the pattern and the design of your doll. You must think first of the age your doll will represent, then the height and create a pattern with the proportions you need in the package that you need it delivered. For our blog post talking about doll and head sizes, doll body proportions and more, you can read an article on my blog linked in the description. I choose not to create caricatures of humans. I strive to provide my dolls with some semblance of realistic proportions without getting too specific or being too perfectionist. I am not a sculptor or a portrait maker. I am a doll maker. And I believe you have some leniency with dolls as you're encouraged to play with them. They are meant for play. So they might have slightly bigger hands than uh, the normal proportions of a human being at that age would have or their feet might have a little odd shape but that's all right. What this means is that you need to think about what you're doing but if I may be so bold as to give you advice think and make. Don't spend all the time just thinking and designing. Get making and affecting the changes you think you need to create a better looking doll to your eyes. You can really spend too much time figuring things out on paper and there's always a sort of magic and chaos 
that happens when bringing things to the fabric and the wool process. Get some real experience behind you. It will be longer lasting than reading or watching many videos or taking many screenshots of dolls. Doll mobility. Now, since natural fiber art dolls are somewhat geared towards collectors that like to play with them and photograph them, normally the dolls have some sort of body movement. Think of heads that can be turned or tilted, arms that can bend or hold poses, legs that can hold the doll upright, and knees that can bend. This adds incredible play value to your doll, but it does make things a lot more complicated. There are so many ways to add movement capabilities to your doll, from an inner armature, ball joints, plastic disc joints, button joints, etc. This is where the design and the techniques you use to create your doll will be of the utmost importance. To me, it's important my dolls look proportional and pretty without clothing, but that's not a priority for every doll maker. Each of us has to make decisions when following certain wishes, and it's all part of the fun of making dolls, figuring things out. I created a series on how to make a doll armature for my Patreon channel, from making hands that can hold objects to arms that can be posed and bent. You can find this process via the Doll Armature series of 2020 by joining the doll making tier on my Patreon channel. Experimenting with doll mobility has been a journey of a few years for me and it has been extremely fun. I have documented some of my thoughts on this via quite a few blog posts, so perhaps you should really pay a visit to my blog and start reading. I will leave my philosophical rants between art dolls and play dolls for another video. We don't have time for that. But do know there's much to be said on the subject, not just from the doll maker point of view, but from the legal requirements to sell dolls and toys in many countries. Skills. Now, what skills should you concentrate as you start your art doll adventure? There are so many skills that go into doll making that it is very hard to give priority to one over the other, as you will definitely need many of them at a good level in order to create a well-made doll. Let's enumerate, as maybe you already are versed in some of them. Sewing by hand, sewing by machine, embroidery, stuffing, pattern design, clothing design, hair, shoemaking, knitting, crochet, photography, wool sculpting, storytelling, and the list goes on. Learning in person is a great way to feel the materials under your hands and under the guidance of an experienced teacher. Not always possible, of course, but highly recommended. If you want to learn directly how to make natural fiber art dolls, there are several teachers organizing in-person workshops. Petit Gosset holds workshops in the US. Maria Nature Toys holds workshops in Germany and the Netherlands. And me, I hold workshops in Canada and the US. If you want to learn to make Waldorf inspired dolls, which I highly recommend to start with before you add more techniques and design details, you can learn from these talented teachers. Monpilu holds workshops in Amsterdam, Ilila holds workshops in the UK, and Lalinda holds workshops in Poland. If learning in person is not suitable for you, some of these teachers also hold online classes. Little Doll House holds live Zoom workshops on natural fiber art dolls. Lavender and Lark holds online classes for needle felted fiber art pieces and miniature dolls. Fig and me, I hold two different styles of classes, guided by me or self-led. You can check out both over here. There are also now many doll makers publishing doll making eBooks. Quality and style varies, of course, but here are some that I think can get you started, from Waldorf dolls to natural fiber art dolls. For materials to create these dolls, I also have another blog post with links to suppliers. You can check it out on the link in the description box. So that's it for today. 
I hope this clears out a little bit the conundrum of what to call your dolls or where to go for the information that you need. Or at the very least, to know where to turn for advice and teaching if you're just getting started or looking to expand your doll making knowledge. <laughs>